Well, Harry Dent's been coming on with us for about five years. He's been a more frequent guest uh, in the latest uh, round of crises. He predicted years ago that China would probably be the trigger contagion for a global stock market, a meltdown that the bond market's ready to go. Ron Paul's been seconding what he has to say. So many other guests we have on have also been warning of this, but he specifically has been saying China's the big issue, uh, not Greece. HarryDent.com, his new book is out, is already a bestseller, The Demographic Cliff. HarryDentResearch.com, HarryDent.com forward slash Alex Jones to find some really good deals on his book. Uh, but he joins us uh, right now to give us his breakdown just for the next 30 minutes. Then I'm going to go to Walt, Carl, Gerald, Truth, uh, Brandon, and others that are patiently holding. In fact, you might get to talk to him if we have if we have time. But I wanted to get him on because still the New York Stock Exchange is closed. Uh, clearly, the computers kicked in when there was a total plunge to turn it off. It's on record they do that. They're lying, saying that uh, it was just a glitch. Uh, normally when they have a stock holiday, a market holiday, they just admit it. This is part of the new wall of deception. Uh, now they're saying it could be a cyber attack. That article's on Infowars.com. Uh, I don't really buy that. Cyber uh, stocks are up around the world right now. China's stock market's down more than 40% right now. That's basically epic level free fall. And... We're going over the demographic cliff right now as we go into the middle area of baby boomers. Already they've been retiring for four or five years, but now the big group is retiring. And uh, we have Obama with Obamacare that's just designed to stall the economy. Uh, you've got attempts to start wars with Russia. Uh, you've got all the saber rattling with China. My concern historically with demographics, Dent can compare, correct me if I'm wrong, because he, he goes off a bunch of different spectrums. Uh, and, uh, and and different indicators, gauges, that war comes next. Uh, so we'll get his breakdown. Former, one of the top analysts and uh, uh, guys over at Bain Capital. Uh, I won't go over his uh, whole uh, background or bio, but he joins us right now, harrydentresearch.com or harrydent.com. Wow, Harry, well, you called it uh, over and over again for how many years that it would be China? And I think this signals, maybe I'm wrong, the beginning of uh, massive correction that you've been warning of. So speak about China, what you think's going on with the U.S. stock market, the, the uh, New York Stock Exchange being closed. Do you agree with me? Do you have any intel? And then what's the next shoe to drop? Well, you know, China led the last breakdown in, in late 2007, 2008. It was ahead of the U.S. markets. And we've also been warning people, Alex, that you've got, you've got to get out of these bubbles early because the first crash is typically 30 to 40 percent within a month or two and people don't have time to get out they say well i'll get out when it starts the week and no it's too late when it happens in a bubble like this and i, I there's, there's going to be a round of things we got to look for i think the chinese market will probably bounce pretty soon they're doing some pathetic just desperate things they stepped in this weekend with 20 billion dollars and bought stocks to prop them up artificially they told all major pension funds in China they cannot sell stocks. They can all, only buy them. They can't sell them. Talk about manipulation of the market. Um, and 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 now forty you know forty of their top companies are not even trading because they can't afford to keep falling. So at some point we'll see this first wave down. And what people should look for is you get a bounce and it only lasts a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months, and then China starts heading down. Uh, the next thing we see Greek. Is in Greece is in trouble. Puerto Rico's next, then Portugal. Uh, Chicago and Illinois are in trouble. But I've been warning on this show that the, the first real critical thing to happen and watch for in the United States is oil drops again, and it's already dropped from 62 to 51 bucks in a few weeks. And, and that triggers a, a, a round of defaults with the fracking industry. The fracking industry is a trillion dollar investment, has created tons of jobs. And has six hundred billion of of high risk, high yield. Um, I know a bunch of people that are in the oil industry, low level, mid level, small company owners. They're all fighting bankruptcy or going bankrupt as we speak. How bad is this going to wound Texas, Oklahoma, the Dakotas, uh, and Canada? It's going to particularly hit Texas, North Dakota, and and Alberta and Canada because that's where most of this is concentrated. And again, most of these uh, frackers and, and oil sands people 
can't uh, I can't break even um, unless oil's over eighty dollars or at least over fifty five. I right. think it's going to ten to twenty in the next next several years. So this is their what they're doing is they're pumping their existing wells to the max to create cash flow because their wells are, are is not it's not expensive to pump. It's expensive to find the darn things and drill. And they were only able to do that with the cheapest junk bonds in history because of quantitative easing and artificial stimulus and high oil price. So, so that's the next thing to hit the United States. But here's the real thing. The, the, the biggest bubble in China is not the stock market. It, by the way, it went up 160% in less than a year and has fallen near 40% here in just a matter of a month. But, but the Chinese save way more money than us. They have no social net and welfare and stuff. And they've always saved more because they've been poor. And even the rich save 75% of their income, the everyday 55%. And guess where they put it? They put it mostly into real estate, way more than the U.S. or Europe. So real estate, the reason the stock bubble happened was in the last year, real estate finally started to cave, but the government's been supporting that and propping that up artificially. They've been buying empty condos like crazy. But when real estate stopped going up, then people started speculating in stocks, which the Chinese don't normally do. And that's why they got such a crazy bubble when two thirds of the new accounts were opened by people who didn't have a high school education. So this is really dumb money and that's why it's failing so fast. So, but it's when the Chinese real estate market finally gets hit harder, like Singapore has recently here. Boy, when that happens, the implosion of wealth in the second largest and fastest growing country in the world is going to be unbelievable. It's going to be like the Japanese in the early 90s when their real estate sure. bubbles imploded. They stopped buying real estate everywhere and they were the lead buyers in, in the key cities. So, so, so you're saying, I mean, to be specific, you're saying you think we'll have a dead cat bounce out of China and for a few yeah. months. And then as we go into the fall, uh, you, you think it's going to go down. Yes. Yeah. And, and same thing. We've, we've had a dead cat bounce and oil is starting to go down. When oil gets back in the low 40s, people are going to realize these frackers are dead and they're going to have to default. Everybody's listening to T. Boone Pickens and people saying, oh, oil will be back to $80 before you know it. It's not going to be. The leading experts and then princes in Saudi Arabia said we will never see $100 oil again. And I agree with that, at least for many decades. I don't know about ever. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, China bubble bursting and, and the fracking bubble bursting are the two biggest things I sure, see. Here's my question, and, and almost everything you said has been right on for 20 years, but, but, but here's my concern. I get that we're going into a depression, people retiring, less money, debts are huge, that causes a real economy, depression prices should fall. But things are so rigged, and they're still going ahead with QE Unlimited all over the world, I, I don't see how down the road other commodities like gold and silver don't go up especially when so many elitists and institutions are quietly buying gold or is that not as an investment just as an emergency backup yeah but they're, they're doing emergency buying of stocks and it didn't work in 1929 for long and it's not going to work in china but down the road commodities are going to be big and i think i do see gold at five thousand, but it's like 15 to the 30 year, 20 years from now we have to go through this deflation first. When, when you get a bubble burst, uh, Alex, there are $225 trillion of loans, bonds, stocks, financial assets around the globe now. And that's gone way up with these bubbles. A hundred trillion of that could disappear overnight. That is real wealth and money to people. Real estate could fall. That's not even counted. And it will Oh, fall. yeah. If people lose most of their savings and everything, it is going to be a hellish pullback. We will be yeah. in a long here's my concern. How bad will this depression be? Because I don't want to scare people, but I've confirmed the military storing food, police departments are digging in, they're getting armored vehicles delivered, that's admitted. Uh, I've got the Ministry of Defense and the Pentagon's own declassified reports where they believe a collapse is coming by 2017, and they said that eight years ago. So quietly, they agree with you, but how bad could this collapse be? I mean, we're talking about something far worse than 2008, aren't we? Yeah, well, it's definitely going to be worse in 2008. Every crash has been worse since 2000 crash. We've had a series of crashes. And to me, you, you don't really see how bad it's going to be until you actually see debts fail and major defaults and loans going bad and, and, and 70, 80 percent crashes in major stock markets. And that's exactly what happened in the early 30s. So I think this is going to be like the early 30s. And I think it's 
it's going to be much worse because governments have now kept this bubble going with quantitative easing, artificial stimulus, zero interest rates, long and short term when you adjust for inflation. They kept this thing going for six more years. It's like taking more of a drug to keep from coming down sure. on a high. The longer you take the drug, the worse sure. your collapse is when well, you find we can handle a couple of Detroits, but what if we have 20 of them? Doesn't this become almost a road warrior scenario in many areas? Well, it does. That's what happens. If people say Greece is no big thing. Greece is small, but it's the first major country or entity to default. And when that happens, people start looking for defaults. Oh, next, elsewhere, and the bond markets get jittery, and interest rates go up. Well, and take a canary. A canary's small in a coal mine, but you, you, know, you watch it. It's a trigger. And again, this, the subprime crisis was the trigger for the last crunch in 2008. In the U.S., we triggered the whole world crisis in four states. So it wasn't that big. And, and, and the fracking industry alone is almost as big as that subprime crisis. So, so we've got a whole bunch of triggers. Whole bunch of triggers. Greece, Portugal, China bubble, stock bubble, real estate bubbles. Singapore's already going down. You know, yeah, there's tons of tricks. And the government is running around like a chicken with its head cut off, battening down the hatches. Yeah, and we've been saying, hey, they'll just keep doing QE until something goes wrong, but they lose control. And the worst thing right now, Alex, long-term rates from Germany to Japan to the U.S. and, of course, Greece are going up now despite runaway QE. All right, that stay there. Shows. Explain that to us when we come back. HarryDent.com. Go to HarryDent.com forward slash Alex Jones, and uh, you can get a free chapter of his book specials on his book the demographic cliff and more and he looks at a whole bunch of different demographic trends throughout history history doesn't repeat it rhymes i forget who said that but it does repeat itself over and over again and what about my question about war because we're going to come back in the next segment and take calls you've agreed to do that i appreciate it from brandon and others but but what about historically uh, in every culture at every time, when there's an economic crisis with the Aztecs or an economic crisis with the Romans or domestic problems in England or domestic problems in France or domestic problems in Europe and, or, or in World War One, World War Two, always we end up going to war. So I don't find it to be a surprise that we see massive escalations uh, in conflict and in potential conflict in this season. What are your graphs and charts that you have on your site that you go over uh, say about war? Well, two things. The World War II, the greatest war in history, followed the Great Depression. The Great Depression and the hyperinflation in the early 20s in, in Germany set up Hitler to rise. People were very dissatisfied. And so when he said, hey, we're doing horribly, but hey, the way we can grow is to go attack everybody else. People like, yeah, yeah, why not? So that was a big trigger for that. And the, my thing, we have a geopolitical cycle that is positive for 18 years, like 83 to 2000, and negative from 9-11 through early 2020, if we're going to see increasing conflict in the Middle East, which is already obvious, and in other parts of the world, and greater tensions between, let's say, China and Japan, Russia and the U.S., anything else, Russia and Europe, it's going to happen, and they're likely to happen in the next five years. I don't think it's quite going to be as much like World War II, only because we don't have the same alignment of major powers that can fight each other. There's nobody that can fully challenge the United States because China's whole military efforts and defense spending is meant on controlling their own people because they're not a democracy. And, and, and you've always said it's a paper dragon militarily. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah military oh, outgoing. They, China cannot attack us like Japan did or Germany. They, 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 they just can't. But they could cause problems in their sphere. And there are growing tensions between China and Japan. There's growing tensions everywhere. And that's one of the reasons a lot of these stock market guys say, oh, well, the stock market's not as overvalued as it was in 2000 when it crashed. Well, the world is three times more risky than it was in 2000. There was no risk in the world. Nothing gone wrong for 18 years. So, so they're, they're underestimating the risk and, and, and overestimating the value of stocks. So, so there's going to be, again, this is going to be a stock market crash around the world. More important, real estate around the world. And when China goes, especially in real estate, that's going to be, that's when people are going to get, oh my gosh, even Vancouver can't hold up, you know, even London, even New York. Well, what about a Chicago going under or Puerto Rico, like you mentioned, or California? I mean, oh. everybody shakes their finger at Greece. 
aren't we, if you count local debt and all the rest of it, and, and even more debt than, than Greece? Yeah, well, we have more private debt than Greece, you know, compared to our economy. Greece has the most public debt outside of Japan and Ireland. But, but I'm, I'm telling you, Alex, you look around the world, most countries have close to four times GDP in private and public debt. And then they have another double that, up to eight times the United States in unfunded liabilities for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. But Obama, Obama said raising the debt limit doesn't raise the debt. Are you saying he's a liar? Well, I'm just saying we're going to run deficits forever because we've made commitments to the ba aging baby boom generation that will not be possible to be paid out of present. Sure, sure. I was being sarcastic about the Obama thing. But but what about what about the young people refusing to do this for the baby boomers? Isn't that going to create a whole new split? Yeah, I, I think basically young people have start are going to start to say we got to start shooting old people. And I you know I hate to put it that way, but. There's no way they can pay for the baby boom benefit, especially in an economy that's going to be very slow because of this debt deleveraging. But also our demographics, our workforce is going to grow a half a percent the rest of the decade, even if the economy stays good. And then it's going to grow zero for the next decade after that. And then it's going to grow slowly again. We're just not going to see the type of growth that can pay off these entitlements. So we're going to run deficits forever. And at some point, in, in the depths of a crisis, we will have to say, you know what, we got to retire at 72 to 75 instead of 62 to 65. The Greeks are retiring at 55 for crying out loud. People want to die and go to heaven, you know, and that doesn't work in the economy. We're going to go to break, come back and take some phone calls. What else as a trigger, just briefly in the 30 seconds we have, what other triggers are out there? Well, again... Debt ratios are high everywhere. Once the economy gets worse, all these debts get triggered. And and, and pe people say, oh, the banks look solvent now. They won't look solvent if real estate goes down another 40%. They're going to be in deeper trouble than they were in 2008 to 2012. I think the real estate decline around the world, and I see a bigger decline just like stocks. It's the big trigger. Okay. Real estate that hits the back by mortgage. Stay there. And we're going to go over all the triggers. You have a chart on that. All I know is there's 2.2, according to the Congressional Budget Office, estimated global derivatives. They have articles I've read in USA Today years ago, you know, saying that basically 60% of that we've signed on to. We're talking about over a thousand trillion. That's not my debt. Our real debt's like 19 trillion. If you look out at what we supposedly have signed on to, it's more like 100 plus trillion. Whatever. It's all untenable. And then I see the socialist generation, the, the Bernie Sanders supporters running around. I mean, I saw him on ABC News going, I want my student loans paid off. Or I want this and that. I want this free. I want that free. They just don't get it. The free lunch is about to be over. And the problem is the corporate free lunch isn't. Most corporations are good. Most companies are good. But the big top ones are a bunch of crony insiders. They've gotten away with everything you can imagine. They're the ones that count on totalitarianism to keep their butts out of jail. They think they can just buy off governments and that long term they'll be safe. They would have been safe not robbing the economy and just skimming off the top in a legitimate way. Because I'm all for wealth creation and, and wealth. Uh, but, but you have crony capitalist scapegoating real capitalism. And I see that as the problem. I see the big trigger is that once we go into just a recessionary depression, that is a recession for some, depression for others, that the spoiled brats out there are going to use the crisis to have a political move to take over the government even more and nationalize and redistribute like Venezuela did, and then they'll really destroy the economy. Because we can always rebuild the economy quickly if we have free market. If we don't, we're living like the new Soviet Union. I, I want to go to some phone calls for our guest. Harry Dent of HarryDent.com, um, again, who predicted that the next big trigger would be China. He was just here two weeks ago saying it. He was here a year ago saying it, five years ago saying it. It's now happening. Uh, the media is being very calm about this, but even British papers say it could be a new you know, global depression. Uh, the Chinese are pulling all their money out of the banks. There's not enough. Greece is doing it. Uh, our banks are making moves saying we won't give you cash soon. Uh, so I see a lot of regulations being changed, a lot of preparation for what I call battening down the hatches, going over your demographic cliff, going over the different triggers.
on the graph you put out a few years ago. I see a few of those things have now happened. But what about my rant, my concern about the social res uh, response we're going to see and all the race war mongering going on by the socialists who want to see a civil war in this country because they're dreaming of 1917 Russia. I, I mean, I'm not being sarcastic. We've got some really kooky, bizarre, sick people who openly say they want to cloward and pivot and collapse because then they can have their socialist takeover with Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. Well, you know, I mean, I've never seen more polarization. Of, it's, it's as much from the rich to the everyday person as it was at the top of the Roaring Twenties. But the political polarization is extreme, especially in the United States. I expect there to be a certain amount of civil unrest. When you see higher unemployment, you always see higher crime. In a place like China, when they move hundreds of millions of people in, in a little over a decade into cities with no skills, and they're not even legal citizens of those cities, when this machine of overbuilding everything to keep the economy going by a top-down government happens, these people are going to be trapped, and, and they're going to have nowhere to go except the squat in the empty condos would be their only thing. So I'd say, you know, like the, the United States and China are two places I see is the most right for some, some you know, level of social unrest and where you live is important. I've sold all my real estate in recent years because we saw the real estate thing coming. Um, I kept one property on an island because I want some place to go if things get really bad. And that's what the elite's doing. And we talked about it years oh. ago, but now it's in the Guardian. It's in the New York Times. Uh, their billionaires are are building secret airstrips with armored redoubts and basically hiring uh, long term security teams and giving them. Uh, you know, stock accounts to basically, you know, never leave them, um, I guess, annuities. I mean, wow, when you see that type of behavior, it, it makes you ask, how bad will it get? Well, and again, the other thing we show about China, it's the wealthiest people in the last several years that have been leaving in droves. What they do is they say, oh, we're just getting our kid an education in, in California or New York or London or Sydney, Australia, and a good university. Now, oh, and while we're there, we're going to buy a $20 million house what they're doing is laundering their money out of the country. The rich Chinese see this crash in China coming. They see the overbuilding. They don't trust the government that's not elected and that, like you say, is crony capitalism. They're getting out. That is not a good sign. Well, I talked to a big defense contractor owner five years ago, and they said within five to six years, the quote, the U.S., as you know, it won't be there. And then I ran into, in uh, outside of Austin, John Wayne's son. And I didn't even know who it was when I was first talking to him. And because my kids were camping out and, and, and at a ranch next door at a house of some doctors I know. And then I was talking to, and they're like, yeah, we're leaving to Costa Rica. Uh, you won't be able to get your money out in about a year. And then there's going to be a collapse in the next six, seven years. And uh, all the big money's leaving. And, uh, and of course, I talked about it at the time. But it's just, it's like, then the public acts like I'm trying to fear monger. All I'm doing is telling people what's really going on. And, and I wish it wasn't true. Yeah, I mean, same thing. I was the most bullish economist from the late 80s on. I'm not, I'm not a, a fear monger by nature, but when you see a bubble of this magnitude and you see it so global, and then on top of that, you see governments, and this is unprecedented, saying when, when the bubble starts to unravel, we're just not going to accept it. We're just going to print trillions and trillions of dollars, prop up markets artificially. This is like fighting with Sasquatch. You don't do it. You don't fight with Mother Nature. It's bigger than you. The universe is going to have a big response to this. The free markets are. And the good thing is you kind of hinted at earlier. The good thing about free markets, it can be painful when we make adjustments. They make them quickly. It's like you ate some bad sushi and your body's smart enough to just flush it out before it poisons you. We're not smart enough to do that. So, so I do, I do tell people I'm leaning more towards, Hey, be more cautious than not, not only be out of markets, but what's the safest kind of best place for you to live and be? How do you protect yourself in case things get really bad? I don't know that they will because we're in a different era than in the 30s, but they might. And, and they could get really bad because this has just been extreme. And I, I've never seen this much um, irresponsibility in financial and fiscal management. Never any time in history. Well, Infowars.com is here covering it. And we've been accurate. Our guests have been accurate. You've been extremely accurate.
And then I look at the very central banks, the very crony capitalists that have helped all this happen, and they are going to be set to get more bailouts, more power out of this. I wonder, my last question before we go to calls for you, Mr. Dent, is do you think the establishment crony capitalist will get out of this without getting in trouble uh, the next round? I mean, are they really too big to fail? Um, I think some of them will, but but I think that uh, the central banks are going to lose massive credibility. They've done the stupidest thing in history. It's worked for five or six years. Again, you want to feel better? Take a drug. You know, there's tons of drugs you can take. It never works out well. That's what they've done financially. This is going to end badly, and they're going to lose credibility. Some of the crony capitalists are going to go down with them. Other ones are gonna, are big enough. I mean, the thing about a time like the 1930s is the strongest survive. The, the, the dominant market share companies survive. But I tell you, lobbying is going to take a big hit. My number one recommendation in my book is say, what should governments do in the future? No lobbyists. You don't have it at all. You don't let companies with special interests tell you what you should do in economic policies because they're going to tell you what's good for them and not what's good for, for you or the country. Yeah, that's America and the whole world's biggest problem. That's why third world countries are third world countries. It's that yep. they have special interest that destroy basic level playing field for their interest and then end up destroying the entire system long term. I mean, I mean, it's a suicidal perspective. Yeah, and, and, you know, we look at demographics around the world, but when we see countries are still poor because of, of with good demographics, we know there's corruption. We know there's crony capitalism. It's kind of tribal, tribal um, economics, which is not good. And that's what America's going into is all these tribal groups and subgroups. Uh, and it's being done by design by the ruling establishment who uh, are just playing with fire. Brandon in Texas, thanks for holding. You're on the air with Mr. Dent. How are you doing today? Good, brother. I guess um, I have three questions if you guys have the time. Uh, my first question is, China, who, who owns the majority of their debt? Mr. Dent? Uh Oh, well, well, I mean, their debt is just like ours. They, they, the government has a certain Bonds. amount. They, they, they push more of their debt down into the local communist parties, and, and they make it easy for them to borrow money. So it's the local governments that, that, that owe the most debt. They also have very low interest rates forced by the government on savers. So savers over there put money in, in um, funds with brokerage firms that then make silly loans to real estate and they may, you know, so those loans are going to go bad. So, so part of it's public, part of it's private. But in China, the, the debt is more government um, driven than it is the United States. At the top of our bubble boom, uh, only about 20 percent of the total debt in this country was government. Eighty percent was private. And in and, and China, it's probably more 50 50. All right. Other questions, Brandon? Uh, yes, sir. Um, now. Once we hit this economic collapse, pretty much, what? How would that affect the homeowner that's still paying on a mortgage? Um, well, there's a bad and good there. Um, if you've got a really high mortgage against uh, a falling equity, I would almost say just hang on to it because at some point, I think governments are going to be forced into telling the banks what they should have told them in the first place: mark down your mortgage loans and your loans to market value. By pumping all this money into the banks, they, they have not had to do that. If you got a house with higher equity or real estate, I, I've been saying sell it, unless it's like my little getaway place, sell it because you can turn that into cash now. And when you get this great deflation, and it is going to be deflation, deleveraging of debt and financial assets, you're going to be able to buy houses, beachfront real estate, companies, all types of stuff at 20 cents on the dollar, 10, 20, 30 cents. It's going to be the, the buying opportunity of a lifetime, but you got to have cash because nobody stay alone. liquid is uh, Harry Dent.com recommendation. Okay, Brandon, thank you. Good questions. Gerald in California, you're on the air. Hey, how's it going guys? Uh, uh, look up to both you guys. Um, so i make this quick. Uh, the financial crisis that's coming that has to do with this fiat currency uh, system. Do you guys think this is a strategic plan to wean us into the Swissindo or any, you know, kind of takeovers by the UN on the, or, you know, introducing us into a new financial system, but obviously getting fight back from the people? 
It's Gerald, that's a great question. I would ask the question this way. Obviously, the, the, the different establishments that work together at the G20 and stuff, they have exit strategies out of this to always get more power out of the crises they helped incubate. Uh, what do you think will come out of this ultimately? Um, right now, it looks like governments are turning to tyranny. Well, yeah, yeah, you see both of that. You're going to see, I think you're going to see power decentralized. Europe is going to break down into smaller units again. That may even happen to some degree in the United States. Uh, on the other hand, there's always some people, some entities, government-wise and major corporations, that because everything else is falling, they get stronger. And if they do have the cash and the power, they will do that. So you're going to see some of both. But I, I actually see more decentralization. I don't think the United States is going to be as powerful militarily as it was in the past. That's already happening. And so it's going to be kind of a funny world where you don't, you know, where, where governments fail. I mean, when these major central banks do this $14 trillion of global stimulus and everything else, and then the economy gets worse, who's going to have faith in these people? And, and there's going to be major reforms of the banking system, and they're not going to allow the banks. That's what Ron Paul says. He says we can come in and 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 restore a ton of basic common sense and free market yeah. ideas, but the danger is the socialists and all their idiot followers are going to try to take over during the crisis. Yeah, and then there'll be both of that. There'll be we will we will own people only do the right thing in a crisis when the barn's burning down. People run in, save the horse, the dog, and the baby, and run out. Everyday people become heroes, just like in 9-11. But most of the time, people are too scared to do something. When we get reality, there's going to be some really good reforms come out of it, but there's going to be some really bad people try to take over power in ways they can because a crisis does allow the strong to uh, take advantage of the yeah, weak. Look out for men on white horses or women. That's I women that ran Benghazi. Uh, Gerald, great question. Let's talk to Truth in Idaho. You're on the air with Mr. Dent. Hello, Alex. How are you today? I'm doing all right. Thanks for holding. I Just crazy times. I, I hate to say we're it right really again. No. Yeah, I got some really potent truth I want to run down with you really quickly. It's going to bless you and your, uh, and your listeners. Uh, it's about Jade Helm. It's about Child Protective Services. DFS. Right, well, I'm going to have to come back to you after Mr. Dent leaves us. We're going to skip this network break so we have a little bit more time. I'll do a little bit of overdrive and have to go to you. But we're, we're taking calls on Greece, the global meltdown, China. That's the big issue we're covering. And it'll be like that throughout the week, obviously. And expect to see more shoes drop. Notice uh, more and more is happening. Uh, I mean, kind of this quickening that you and others have talked about. Uh, so more and more of the triggers getting pulled. In fact, I want to see if we can put back on screen for TV viewers uh, your chart. We've been talking about this chart for a while. Uh, how long is your, uh, has this global trigger chart been out there? Oh, the last couple of years. I mean, it, it's the same thing. Um, the biggest surprise outside of the China bubble bursting we've been saying for the last years is Germany looks worse than Japan did to us in the late 80s. And we were the only people that saw the fall of Japan, the only people anywhere because they were just rising. They look good. But they were at a demographic peak. They had a major real estate bubble and stock bubble, just like China does today. And they went down like a lead balloon when the demographics no longer support it. Germany has the worst demographics in the next eight years. And only the fall in the euro in the last few years has kept their exports up because they export 50 percent of their. That's economy. right. I mean, they should be making babies, not uh, Mercedes yeah. Benz. Carl exactly. in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, thanks, gentlemen. I just want to let you know I bought Harry's book, Demographic Cliff, the last time you had him on, which was a couple weeks ago, and I appreciate that. Um, another book that I downloaded for free, it's a real short, easy read, and it lays this crisis at the feet of the same people that have been doing it since 1907, and that's the central bankers. Yeah. Uh, it's it's, um, it's uh, none dare call it conspiracy. Like I said, I downloaded it for free. Yeah, Gary Allen, we sell the book. Yeah, and uh, if you if you fancy yourself a populist, the uh, these guys, the central bankers, recognize the populist movement after they created the central bank or Federal Reserve as a uh, threat, and and the author uh, recognized the populist movement as having all you know some good questions but all the wrong answers because a pro populist movement identified the central bankers as being a free enterprise. Whether well, or not they're all socialists, so they took that movement over, and that's what we have today. Um, well, it's true that, that the super, super uh, rich elites are the ones funding, the, taking our guns, breaking down our families, 
getting us in debt. I mean, they're very parasitic, and they wage war against real free market while getting the free market blamed. So it's really a genius plan, the George Soros's of the world. I appreciate your call. Um, Mr. Dent, your take on what he was just saying? Yeah, I mean, I always tell people there's no accident that the Great Depression and the Roaring Twenties bubble followed the creation of the Federal Reserve because they do the same thing they do. They, they go top down. They don't let the economy rebalance. They kill free market capitalism. And since the economy doesn't rebalance, you build bigger and bigger bubbles until you have a giant burst. And that's what we have now in spades. Central banks should only be there for liquidity and emergency situations. They should not be constantly stimulating the economy. They're, they're basically like drug pushers. I hate to say it, but since the 70s, when Keynesian economics became popular, it was invented in the 30s by John Maynard Keynes, basically we've been doing nothing but borrowing, running trade deficits, budget deficits, creating a bigger and bigger bubble, and history's clear on this. Bubbles always burst, and when they do, you see the worst of time. That's right, and at least before the central banks took over studying history, there were a lot of bubbles, but they were localized, they were regionalized, and, and sometimes and they, they would build some infrastructure, so when they popped... The only folks getting burned were people that were burned at the end. Well, that's free market. But now since they prop them up, they get so mega huge, it engulfs people that weren't even part of them. Right. And, and if you make, and then, and then in the capitalist system, the whole point, if you make bad loans, you lose money. Well, they don't let anybody lose money anymore. They don't let speculators lose money until it falls apart. They only make us lose money bailing them out, and that's a crime. Exactly. HarryDent.com. Well, uh, we really get hit when the economy collapses. Uh, well, well, one thing's for sure. We're in for a wild ride. This is just the beginning into the slide, in my view, and I think uh, Harry Dent's view as well, obviously. Walt in Michigan, thanks for holding. You're on the air with our guest. Uh, hello, Alex. I wanted to point out uh, Revelation chapter 13, 15 through 18. That's what's going to happen to everybody around the world, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or and their foreheads, you know, the RFID chip, and we'll be able to buy or sell. That's your money. And Revelation 6.15 through 6.16 talks about what's going to have these rich men who've got all these caves and dens in the earth where they got all their food and all their goodies stored for them to get away from the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes back to put a hammer onto the satanic new world order. Well, Walt, I know this. I am a Christian. It uh, doesn't mean I follow these fake establishment churches that are basically government run. But I'll tell you this. This is biblical when they want to get rid of cash, have a global super bank, the Pope's endorsing it, carbon taxes, and where you've got to be tracked everything you do. That sounds like a recipe that would uh, absolutely be loved by any fascist leader. Uh, your take on the whole move to demonize local farms, local commerce, barter, uh, you know, micro economies, lemonade stands, uh, this whole move towards getting rid of cash. What's behind that? Well, you know, I mean, this is natural to happen. But when the when you get deleveraging and the economy breaks down, that's the reason it breaks down. You can't have real change in reform unless the present structures that have built up for decades, all these special interests, unless this breaks down, you can't build out of the ashes again. So so these these efforts like the Chinese to prop up their stock market short term and, and people to prop up systems and to keep printing money to keep the bubble from collapsing and financial institutions that overlap money, it, it's not going to work. It just makes it worse in the long term. So to me, it's very simple. The longer this denial, bubble denial goes on, the worse a crisis we'll have to follow. Sure, and, and, and the centralized uh, state-run economy or, or central bank-run economy is in competition with any local economy it doesn't control. And so everything's got to get in line and only buy from the central system in its view to prop it up when really all that does is destroy any true grassroots economy that's key during any collapse. Well, you know, I'll say, you know, the worst thing, China is the epitome, like Russia before, the Soviet Union, of a top-down, government-driven economy. They say it's better, they coordinate everything, and people like it at first. Mark my words, China is going to prove once and for all that a top-down, centrally driven economy does not work as well as a bottoms-up, democratic, free market system. And democracy, really, Alex, is a bit of socialism. It balances out capitalism. It gets everybody a vote while the rich get richer if they add innovation. But I'm telling you, China 
is overexpanded 12 to 15 years in the future, more than any country in history, and they are going to go down. Sure. They're going to fall over like an elephant. Well, you're right. The only true socialism is the free market in that it does give everybody a say, but then the socialists actually attack it because they're not even real socialists, and now you get deep into semantics and what it all means. HarryDebt.com forward slash Alex Jones to find deals on your new best-selling book, The Demographic Cliff. Thank you so much for spending time with us on short notice, sir. Thank you. Wow. Uh, I am just basically speechless at this time.